Welcome to the Handy Mom 868 Bamboo. For those of you who are new to my channel and are interested in anything home maintenance, home organization, or home decor related, then you're in the right spot. You don't got to move a place. I'm starting my series of Christmas decor tips for this season. For those of you who are part of the Handy Mom 868 tribe, welcome back. It's always a pleasure to see you guys. So let's get started. You know the saying, see me and come live with me is two different things? Well, I tell you, this tree caught my eye. And for those of you who don't know the whole story behind me finding this tree, then you need to watch my Christmas shop hop day one and day two to find out more about that. For those of you who know, listen, Zoe and I put this tree up. Well, she tried to help, but you're gonna see that in the video. And one of the things I noticed is that some of the branches had a little like rust mark and stuff like that. Now, for those of you who don't know, I got this tree at a real steal of a deal. So when I saw little things like that, I was like, ah, oh, okay, that's why. But knowing me, that doesn't bother me at all because I can work with whatever I have. And that's exactly what I've done. He didn't shed or anything like that, but the frost particles on the leaves, oh my gosh, that got everywhere. So it was frost and glitters. Now I'm hoping that, you know, as it's a new tree, that's going to be the first time and it's not going to be as bad. So fingers crossed, but as you know, you just need to know how to work with the flowers to get the effect that you want. Finding the perfect spot for my tree meant moving this little play area that Zoe has here. Don't worry, it'll be relocated to a place that she can access her toys. Next is to give here a quick sweep in. The rug was washed recently, so it's just any little particles that accumulated since it was washed. Then a quick mopping with my Swiffer wet check. Now that the space is nice and dry, I can relay my rug and start putting together the base of my Christmas tree. Now I know that tree colors are the rage right now. I've seen some gorgeous ones, but I've decided to use this plant box that I found at Almando's home store to raise my tree at least two feet off the ground. Now you really need to ignore the packaging because this is such a gorgeous tree. Even though the box looks like it has been to hell and back in a handbasket, it is all worth it. Now I did plan to use the original stand that came with the tree, um, but I think I made one boot. So as you can see, the stand measurements fit the box exactly. However, the braces inside the box actually prevent the stand from fitting inside the inner part of the box, which I didn't cater for. So my solution right now is to use some Velcro tape together with my staple gun and secure it to the top of the brace area. You vacuum in. It 
is advisable to start fluffing your tree before you complete the installation. So you start from the bottom and work your way up and around. Fluffing as you go will make your job so much easier. I think I'm gonna open all these branches before I put them on top of the tree because it already looks like I'm gonna to have to be on a ladder or a stool to finish decorating. Now, what fluffing or shaping basically does, it gives your tree some nice dimension and makes it look a little more full, a little more realistic as we create that backdrop for our lights and our decorations. Now, the key tip to fluffing your tree properly is to start from the innermost part of the branch. When you start on the inside branch, you want to make sure that you create a type of star-like pattern with the leaves in the branches. So basically you're going to have leaves pointing in several directions. Now, when you reach to the end of your branches, what you can do now is fluff more of the leaves pointing up or at an angle. What this does, it gives your tree a more realistic feel because in nature, the leaves generally are pointed towards the direction of the sunlight and most times the sunlight is. Now, the great thing about properly fluffing your tree is that you don't need to fill the tree with as much decoration. Now, that is a bargain right there because you'd find that the more sparse your tree looks, or depending on the type of um, look you're going for because some people are going for the really sparse, simple, Nordic look right now but if you want your tree to look a little more full and you don't want to invest in too much decorations and too many balls and stuff to act as filler the key is fluffing your tree and as I continue I'm going to show you guys the final result of fluffing my tree and you'll see the big difference that it makes. So this is the difference between the side that has been fluffed and the side that has not yet been fluffed. You see all the spaces? So here I'm going to give you guys a closer look to what attracted me to this tree. It was the well-formed um, needle-like needles that are on the branches and also this light kind of frosting or melted snow look. It's absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so today we're going to deal with lighting. I'm going to show you guys how to light your tree so that it does not look just one dimensional in terms of where the light is coming from. Now, a very important part of this is where you place your lights on your tree. For those of you who have pre-lit trees, well then I guess you can fast forward and, and skip this step. Although there are some pre-lit trees that may need an extra added feature that I do to my trees to give them that nice animated look that we want for a Christmas tree, that twinkle. So I'm gonna show you some of the lights that I'm using and let's see if I, I i know that i have referred to christmas lights as being the devil and to some degree i still believe that but let's hope that this year that when i plug in all my lights say a prayer for me that they work i've used the same lights for the last say two years if you saw my Christmas tree mannequin video, then these are the same lights that I use on my Christmas tree mannequin. So, I mean, they have some age on them. Let's hope that that doesn't make a difference in whether they light or not for this year. This is the other thing about lights I can handle. One miss pull and everything tangles up and all over again. I have them all sorted out on the floor here. You would swear I did not. All right, so the lights I'm using are these LED warm white. So these lights have three clusters 
um, at several points as it goes along. These are unusual string lights because usually your string lights would have one light as it goes along the series. But this one actually has three on each. So this kind of adds to the effect that I'm looking for. Yeah. I will also be using some of these single LED lights. These are warm white. And these are the single ones. Now, some people, some people prefer to use colored lights and um, colored lights are good for certain applications, especially for instance, say using a uh, all white tree and you want to use, you want to get a blue hue or you're using blue decorations for that tree or red. Uh, I am not a colored lights girl. I don't think I will ever become a colored lights girl. So the lights I would stick with will always be warm white. Well, let me quickly just test them. I have, uh, I have six to eight strands of lights that I'll be using on this tree. And I'm gonna start, as usual, with any of my trees decorating from the inside out and when I say the inside out what do I mean I basically mean that on the trunk of my tree what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a single strand of fairy light or twinkle light this twinkle light or fairy light is supposed to replicate that flickering of the candle within the tree so all the lights work and Yes, and I hope they stay like this for the entire season. They provide lighting in three directions, which is very useful, especially when you're decorating the tree from the inside out. Okay, so those of you who don't know what the fairy lights look like, let me show you what they look like. So they are like this and they twinkle. I can't seem to find my warm white LED, so I'm not going to be bothered. I'm using what I have at this point. And I'm sure the reason that it's still in the box is because I realized too late that it was a bright white. So let me put it on a tree and see how that works. And I have it all plugged in to my power strip. I'm using a green power strip so that when I tuck it into the tree, you won't really see it standing out. And the reason I'm using a power strip is so that I can plug it in separately. But not only that, I can also just turn it on and off when I'm ready to leave the room and all lights will come on. This one most likely would be the sequence that I'll be leaving it on. Now, the only problem with these particular lights is that when once you turn the power off, you have to set your frequency all over again. I'm sure there's a solution to that. I haven't found it yet, <laughs> but I'll work on that. So right now, let me just put the fairy light into the trunk of the tree. For those of you with sensitive skin like mine, what I also recommend is that you wear gloves, long gloves or long sleeves when doing this. Because trust me, the amount of scratches you're gonna get on your skin, you're gonna swear you're in some cat fight. Now I don't know if you guys are picking this up, but already without the rest of the light on, just that twinkle in the center of the tree is actually giving the tree some life or some dimension to it. Let me continue with the rest of the light. Now, as I said, using string lights, you want to run your light from the inside and come out on your branch. It prevents you from having that lit area just on the outside of your tree. Now, it's, it's a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie, but it's well worth it. For those of you, as I said, who have pre-lit trees, hey, you may not have this problem. My only issues with pre-lit trees is that after a couple of years, you have to look for that dreaded bulb or that dreaded light that went out that causes your tree and some portion not to continue lighting. Now, I am not 
in love with that white light LED in the center as my fairy light so don't be surprised if I come back and tell you guys hey I changed out that light for a warm white LED fairy light I'm gonna leave it for now and you know let's just see how it goes if I don't love it I can just unplug it and then plug in a warm white LED once I get one once I find them or once I purchase a new box and run it up the tree trunk so that I can have that twinkle effect that I want. So let's see how this goes. Now it's on to decorate it. The biggest questions people ask is, how do I know where to place my ornaments? Then the second part of that question is, how do I know which ornaments to use? I wanna say it's as simple as using your shapes. And when I say shapes, if you haven't seen my Christmas mannequin tree decoration, then I advise that you look at that video. In that video, I actually show you the method that I use to place my Christmas decorations. And basically, it's, I'm using that diamond method, which will give them spacing far enough from each other to create that visual appeal that you're looking for. In terms of which ornament to use where, you use your larger ornaments to the bottom and gradually reduce the size as you go up. Now, at certain points in the tree, you may want to add like medium shaped balls together with smaller balls to create that kind of three dimensional look. Or you may even want to add clusters of ornaments. So you may add a cluster of three or four together where you would use a large ball, a medium ball, a smaller ball to create that look on your tree now the other thing that you guys need to remember is that you want to use the smooth or shiny objects more to the center of the tree more into the tree so that it picks up the light and actually reflects it outside of the tree with this tree i'm going to use some of my large glitter balls that i'm going to put more to the center and then as i come out i will gradually use smaller balls and I want to say you use your less expensive balls to the center. They create space for your more novelty items or your handmade or your special ornaments that you want to use to showcase. Now this year, I actually bought some really wide ribbon. If you saw my day two Christmas shop hop video, I, I showed you that I bought this really gorgeous, look at it, really gorgeous, thick, four inch thick ribbon at, from Bagwan Sings Hardware from the Christmas shop. Um, these are designer ribbons, they are sturdy. The inside has a satin type finish there. So whichever side you use, it's gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And these are kind of pricey. There are several ways you can use your ribbon on a tree. You can drape the ribbon, you can make it cascade, string down the tree, or just at several points. I'm gonna do this a little different. I'm gonna create a loop and a tail and use that for my tree. So you'll see what that looks like. I know some people are very intimidated by these ribbons. They don't want to make a wrong cut. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a loop and a tail and then I'm going to scissors the tail. I will basically measure how much I want to use for my first loop and tail and then use my first loop and tail to measure subsequent loops and tails. To secure my loops and my tails, what I'm going to be using is for a wire. And don't forget your trusty, yeah, big nose pliers. Now I have two ribbons. I have this one and I also have my gold ribbon, which is the same thickness. One of the things you want to maintain is 
continuity in terms of the decorations that you use within your space so you try to use bits and pieces of what's on your tree and take it into the deco across your room so i may not use all the loops and bows on the tree but at least i know how many i have in total so that i can space them out accordingly on my tree now remember these are wired ribbons so be sure to use a proper scissors when cutting it and then keep that scissors for cutting wire ribbons only if you look at last year's video where i showed you how to make that perfect bow you understand why you don't use your good scissors to cut your ribbons get a dedicated ribbon cutting scissors and leave it in your craft box or your storage box just for cutting wire ribbons here i am it's the moment of truth here i go Y'all, it's just ribbon. Expensive ribbon. Expensive no ass, but it's just. I'm gonna make my loop just as I would do when I'm starting my bows. I'm going to fold it and then gather it like this. And this is the tail. I'm gonna secure it with my floral wire. Now be sure to leave enough floral wire so that you can attach it to your tree once I have my loop nicely nice and secured then what I'm gonna do is cut the tail of fishtail the tail of my ribbon and if you have not seen the video yet you need to check out a video of how to make that perfect bow it will show you all the techniques that I use when making my bow this particular one is the fishtail method and basically start from the center depending on how high you want your fish tail to be and then make a cut out to the end see so you have something that looks like this and then when you open it up you have perfect fish tail this is basically how my loop and my tail are going to go onto the tree secured with my floral wire I'm gonna fluff it like this. Now I know when Zoe sees it, she's gonna say mermaid because she knows what the mermaid tail looks like. So I'm doing this especially because of her. Um, if you use a little bit of your imagination, you can see where this actually looks like a mermaid. When I was thinking about the tree and how I'm gonna use the ribbon, that's the first thing that came up to me, that she loves mermaids. So I'm gonna do a mermaid type bow on the tree. So this is my first loose and bow. What do you think? So this is a 10 yard spool of ribbon. And if I want to use, and um, 10 yards is equivalent to 30 feet. So most likely I'm just going to use about 20 feet of bows, which will give me about 10 bows. And then the rest I'm going to leave it as a larger piece of ribbon in case I need to use it for something else in the decor in this particular space. Okay, so let me get started on making my bows. So now that I have my loops and my tails, I'm going to place them on my tree using the same diamond pattern to ensure that they're well spaced out. One of the things to note is that I am not putting it to the very tip of my branches. I am actually trying to get somewhat an, onto the inner branch so that it looks like a half a bowl just peeping out from inside of the tree. Now the question some people ask is, do you have to decorate the back of your tree if no one is seeing it? I'll give you the short answer. The short answer is no. However, what you want to do is ensure that you do add some of those filler ornaments to the back of your tree. Because what it does, it tricks the eye into thinking that there's more depth to your tree than there actually is. Do you decorate the back of your tree? Leave me a comment in the comment section. Let me see what you guys say. 
and would you be decorating the back of your tree from now on? So where I have this tree set up is in a peculiar situation. It is right before or adjacent to my mirrored sliding door and this gives access to my craft supplies and other things that I use sometimes in the room here with Zoe. I, so I've left some space for me to get in between. But what makes it so peculiar is the fact that the mirror is going to reflect the tree. So I need to make sure that the back and the side are well decorated because you're going to see it in the reflection of the mirror. Now it's important that when you are decorating your tree that you take a step back and look at the tree and envision where your pieces are going to go because sometimes when you're close up you can't get that real view and it's okay to adjust because I mean it's a work in progress so don't be too hard on yourself step back look at it readjust and you know move on okay so I'm going to continue adding my bowls now and then we'll see how this progress you know I'm playing with it right now I'm going to start using some of these babies these um, for those of you in Trinidad and Tobago I got these at excellent stores at Price Plaza even though my tree has a general color theme so my color theme is basically teal green and gold I'm using several different shades of teal or green and several shades of gold so there's more contrast thereby creating that nice aesthetics that we're looking for so not because you say that you're going with green you need to use just one shade of green the different shades of colors creates more visual depth for your decor. So what I'm going to do now is insert some floral picks in between the balls and this will help fill up some of the spaces. Now I'm not one of those who likes to see their Christmas tree ram crammed with ornaments. If that is you, that's that's your style, that's okay, that's not my style. So I'm not going to try to overwhelm the tree in terms of covering up each and every inch of the tree with my decor. I want it to be just enough to be balanced and coordinated and just give a nice warm but rich feel to my tree. Now I'm going to open up these floral picks. I got these lovely floral picks from the retail warehouse online at Chanka Trace in El Socorro for those of you who are in Trinidad and Tobago. It basically has both the teal and green and it has some gold in it so it really does you know tie all my colors from this theme together. As with your tree you need to take some time and fluff your picks. Now, even though you have a lot of decorations, you don't want to use all your decorations on your tree. So keep that in mind when you're doing your decorations because there are other places that you actually want to use the same colors and the same ornaments that you use in your tree in those particular areas. Have a, a plan in your mind in terms of where else you're going to add that Christmas touch within your space so that you will actually leave some of the ornaments available to create that whole cohesive look okay so that's a quick tip now I'm gonna add some of these frosted berry picks these I got at Almando's home so you can see they have an actual frosted kind of look on them they look like they're covered with flurries right now Now remember to fluff your picks, huh? Because they all come flat, but we're not using them flat. We want to give them a little bit of dimension. So just as they will be in nature, that's what we're trying to recreate here. So this is how it comes. This is how it should look. 
by the time you're finished with it. See the difference? We're almost there, we're almost there. Um, I just want to add some like white to kind of bring out the colors, the rest of the colors on the tree. Then we have the featured item for this Christmas tree decoration. These lovely, these gorgeous flowers I got from the retail warehouse online. I'm a pearls girl for those of you who don't know. They basically have pearl center, then around the leaves there's a small detail. They add that nice softness to the whole decor. Continuing with my pearl theme, I am actually using these pearl covered balls. I got these at Stumpy's Emporium here in Tobago. Uh, when I stumbled across them, I was like, yeah, I need to have a couple of those. These are my discount finds that I got at Bagwan Singh's Christmas shop at Trin City. These gorgeous uh, teardrops, the detail on them. Now with ornaments like these that have a type of drop look, you want to put them in an area where they can actually hang unencumbered by the rest of the ornament. So these will go closer to the tip of your branches. Now I don't know how many of you remember these, but these acrylic snowdrops are just so beautiful. They're just so cute and one of the things I love about them is the way they reflect and refract the light so that it actually bounces all over the Christmas tree. I have special places for these and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with them. It's that time. I am famished but I don't want to leave the tree until I show you guys this special feature now I know I mentioned it in my video of my my day two video I think it was for my Christmas shop hop in Trinidad I was so surprised when I saw this item at Bagwan Singh's Christmas shop because I've had the item sitting in my Amazon cart wondering if I should order it whether it will get here in time for me to do this video for me to show you how it works and that item is this I know it may not look like much now, but I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on the tree. This is an ornament spinner. Yes, it actually makes your ornament spin on your tree. It will take some working because they were not meant to work on LED strings of light. It doesn't have enough power on the LED string. So you're going to have to use one of the older incandescent string of Christmas lights to mount these on. Now the key to it is this. If you're using LED lights like I am, you can just run a string of incandescent lights through your tree and then identify the spots that you want to put your spinners. In that particular spot where you want to put your spinner, you want to make sure that the ornament that you're putting on it can easily spin without anything blocking its way. It needs to have free rotation. Now the other thing you need to remember is that because it is not made for a particular string, you need to remove the little portion that comes with it so it can fit into the string type that you have. And it's quite simple. The instructions are on the pack, but you just peel out the prongs that are on it. That's the electrical prongs. You take up the bulb attachment from the actual string of your Christmas light. So this is my bulb. I'm removing this green spot here. Basically, I'm peeling this back, taking it off, sliding it off. Yeah, basically trying to feed the wire back into where you took the bulb out of and then bend it back. Just as the wiring of the bulb was, you, you bend back the wire just like that and insert it into the spot where you removed it from the Christmas lights. Right, so it could fit in the spot where you took it off from the string light. So now that I'm almost finished, I have just one touch I want to add, which is the tree top. Now usually I would advise if you have very tall trees that you start with the top up because it's really difficult to maneuver around your branches and your decorations to get that tree topper there once the tree is completed. 
I really was very indecisive about what I was going to use as my tree topper. So now that you see my special feature, um, I have some some tweaks to make i have some additions to make i'm gonna do that off camera and when i come back you're gonna see the fully glammed out playroom studio christmas tree I started this YouTube channel my first video was actually a Christmas video and it was when I did my mannequin Christmas tree so for you guys who have not seen that video can you check it out and tell me some of the things that you think I could have done differently or some of the things that you use from that video to create a space this season for your Christmas decor if you found value in this video, please give me a thumbs up. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That's how you know when I upload new videos. I can also be found on Facebook and Instagram where I share little nuggets of inspiration in between videos. As usual, it was my pleasure bringing you this information and I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. See ya.